Thank you very much. Uh, my paper on Prabhachandra has turned out to be work in progress because, as you will see immediately, the criticism le leveled at Prabhachandra uh, need to be investigated further and even substantiated in terms of Akalanka's works in order, I think, to reinstate him. Hence, my preliminary findings have turned out to be an apologia of Prabhachandra's views. In his now well-known work, Jain Ontology, Dikshit conveniently divides the history of Jaina philosophical speculation into three so-called ages of logic, after having dealt with the age of Agamas. The word logic in the ages of logic may be understood as the logic of the arguments by Jaina thinkers in different periods or ages, namely the arguments both against non-Jaina views as well as those in support of their own position on philosophical issues. The ages are divided chronologically in terms of important texts by renowned thinkers. Dikshit seems to want to clearly demarcate Shvetambara and Digambara contributions in the different ages. So th the first age um, regards Siddhasena, and he quotes the text Sanmati, Malavadi, Naya Chakra, Jina Bhadra, and then the Digambara thinkers that he mentions for the first age are Kunda Kunda and Samanta Bhadra. With Kunda Kunda's dates, we have a big problem, as we already know. Um, it is also interesting to see what he says about after Mimamsa Dikshit. He says the after Mimamsa was rather poor in content, though brilliant in form. The second stage is made up by Haribhadra as the Shvetamara thinker, then Akalanka and Vidyanandin. And in his works, uh, in, his, uh, in this section of his work, Dikshit uh, quotes these texts from these authors. The third stage, and this is where Prabhachandra comes in, is he is the first one in the third stage, and the Shvetambara thinkers are Abhaya Deva, Vadi Deva, Suri, and Yasho Vijaya. It is significant that Prabhachandra's name is first in the third stage because he would be the link from the second stage and for those who come after him. So for example, Vadideva's Syadvada Ratnakara resembles Prabhachandra's Pramaya Kamala Matanda closely. The threefold division of ages of logic in contrast to the age of the Agamas is based on the view that certain tendencies characterize the ages of logic, namely to vindicate the doctrine of Anekantavada, to establish the Pramanas, to evaluate non-Jaina views, and to defend traditional Jaina philosophical views. And this is the reason for him to group them into three major sections, namely Anekantavada, Pramanas, and then the traditional defense of Jaina positions. This threefold division of the age of logic takes into account 12 thinkers and 25 works from about the 4th to the 17th centuries. The advantage of this classification is that it groups a specific number of thinkers and texts in order to facilitate an overview of Jaina speculation on specific themes directly or indirectly related to ontology. His work is called Jaina Ontology. That this scheme is practical may be seen in the fact that although, for example, Manikya Nandin's Parikshamukha is not mentioned and is conspicuous by its absence, he quotes Prabhachandra's or he mentions Prabhachandra's Pramaya Kamala Martanda, which is a commentary on the Parikshamukha. 
One could argue that the scheme is an oversimplification of 13 centuries of Jaina speculation and disregards a vast amount of ideas by other thinkers. This would no doubt be true. If thinkers are left out, like Maniki Anandin, and many important works ignored, for example, Vidyanandin Satya Shasana Pariksha, we certainly get a limited picture. In other words, Dikshit's work has to be complete, consulted with caution and with exhaustive supplementation. Moreover, many of his remarks have to be carefully weighed in the light of their opinionatedness, as for example, in the case of Prabhachandra. All of us have been quoting Prabhachandra throughout this conference, and let's see what he says about Prabhachandra. So I'm quoting directly from Dikshit. On page 102, he says that the Gambara author who followed Vidyananda was Prabhachandra, and has and as has already been hinted, I couldn't find where, he was an inferior genius as compared to the former. Then he says, Prabhachandra too, like Vidyananda, he means Vidyanandin, surveys the contemporary philosophical scene in the light of Akalanka's discoveries, but his insights had its limitations. The result was that Vidyananda gave us two of the most advanced philosophical texts coming from the pen of a Jaina. So, he mentioned these works, Tatvato Shloka Vartika and Ashta Sahasri, while Prabhachandra gave us two textbooks to be used by fairly gifted schoolboys. And he's referring to Nyaya Kumudha Chandra and the Pramaya Kamala Mahatanda. Uh, this is only a selection of what he says. I, for this purpose, I have in my paper all of them. Uh, he then says on page 103, but certainly the reign of Prabhachandra's inquiry was less comprehensive than that of Vidyananda and his treatment of topics less advanced than that of the latter. As a matter of fact, a study of Prabhachandra is a good preparation for that of Vidyanandin. That it is a good preparation argues for Prabhachandra's work, worth, that it is only a preparation argues for his limitation. Prabhachandra made it a point to introduce in his commentaries an exhaustive and systematic discussion of the major philosophical issues of his times. Quite positive. Prabhachandra's level of discussion is decidedly less advanced than that of Vidyananda. Of course, two questions are somewhat new in Prabhachandra. Thus, in the Nyaya Kumuda Chandra, there occurs a detailed refutation of the six Vaisheshika Padarthas and the 16 Nyaya Padarthas, the former, which is more important, being repeated in Pramaya Kamala Mahatanda. In Vidyananda, I'm still quoting Dikshit, such a ref refutation was just hinted at. Similarly, in both Nyaya Kumuda Chandra and Pramay Kamala Martanda, there occurs a detailed treatment of the theories of error maintained by diverse philosophical schools. Vidyananda is unfamiliar with this problem. Prabhachandra's writings should serve as a good intro introduction to those of Vidyananda. Prabhachandra's writings have the advantage that they contain one discussion at one place. The Nyaya Kumuda Chandra is to be studied not so much for the sake of the light it throws on Akalanka's works, words, as for the independent philosophical discussions it incorporates. We can understand all these points as Dikshit's opinions, contradictory as they may sound in some places. He is no doubt entitled to them. 
But what about this? Prabhachandra's commentary on Akalanka's famous verse, Jnanam Adhyam Matihi Sangya Chinta Chabhino Abhinibodham, etc. This is from the Akalanka Granta Trayam and specifically from the Pramana Pravesha, which is part of the Lagiya Straya. Dikshit says, here Mati was a wrong reading for Smriti. Vidyananda has the correct reading, and yet Prabhachandra had no difficulty in commenting on it and in the course of it in attributing an arbitrary, arbitrary meaning to the phrase Jnanam Adhyam. I think this is quite a serious charge that has to be dealt with in some detail, and I think at least in three major points. So I was wondering where he got this criticism from, because in the footnote number 51, Dikshit gives exact references, um, so Nyaya Kumudha Chandra, page 403, and for Vidyananda's reading, he gives the quotation. So I was wondering whether he really read these things, and this is what I want to present to you. It is a moot question whether Dikshit in 1971 merely repeated a point already made in the Hindi introduction by Kailash Chandra Shastri to the first volume of the Nyaya Kumuda Chandra, first published in 1938, who begs for forgiveness in pointing out an error in Prabhachandra's reference to the said stanza of Akalanka. The other point to consider is whether the introduction by Shastri that uh, Prabhachandra sees Smriti, Pratyabhigya, Tarka, and Anumana in opposition to the Jaina tradition and therefore incorrectly as Shruta. It seems to me that this reference by Shastri in his introduction is taken from the statement in the Nyaya Kumuda Chandra where Smriti Adi Avishadam Gyanam Shrutam Ityoktam and that their cause is erroneously seen as mati. And this probably refers <coughs> to Nyaya Kumada Chandra, where, that, where Prabhachandra says, Tasya Shurasya Kim Karanam Matihi Iti. The introduction goes on to say further that no one in the Jaina tradition has regarded Smriti as Pratyaksha. And this probably refers to Prabhachandra, uh, Nyaya Kumada Chandra, where he talks about Mati here and uses Pratyaksham as the cause of that. So when I read this, I had to reconsider a few things. In 19... In 2002, in an article about epistemological categories in the Akalanka Granta Trayam, I tried to see diagrammatically which pramana belongs uh, where in which work, including Akalanka's Lagiya Straya for which Prabhachandra's Nyaya Kumada Chandra is a commentary. And I drew up a scheme um, of the pramanas in Akalanka, and I came up with this scheme. So Pratyakya and Paroksha and, and the different pramanas under each of them, where mati comes under indriya pratyaksha and smriti under anandriya pratyaksha. So when I read all these things, I started shaking because 
I had to rethink the scheme that I had drawn up in 2002. And I am happy that I have the opportunity now to go back to this. So I started looking around, and I was fortunate to come across Ghoshal's translation of the Pariksha Mukha by Manikya Nandin. And he very interestingly gives a scheme of Akalanka in, an, in the introduction to his translation. He, um, this is just to show that I wasn't completely false. Uh, he has a, a bit more than I had at that time, but the basic structure seems to be the same, where Mati comes under Indriya Pratyaksha uh, and Smriti under Anindriya Pratyaksha, because these are the words that are significant in this serious criticism of Prabhachandra by Dikshit. And it seems also by Shastri in his introduction. In my appendix to my paper, I quoted the introduction part of the, uh, the entire introduction uh, on Akalanka, and I want to mention just one part of it for my purposes here. Goshal says in his introduction to the Parikshamukha text and translation, now to meet the argument that if we take Mati as Pratyaksha, we must say that the traditional acceptance of the view that it is Paroksha is denied. Undermining the oldest authorities like Umar Swami, Akalanka has written that Mati, Smriti, Sangya, Chinta, and Abhinibodha will be Pratyaksha so long as these remain in the mental state. The moment these are connected with words, that is, are expressed in words, they will become Paroksha. And he goes on to say, thus Akalanka has accepted Mati, etc. as Pratyaksha in one sense and Paroksha in another sense. According to Akalanka, Shruta is what is heard and the knowledge having no connection with words is sung Vyavaharika Pratyaksha. So what we need to do is to analyze the text more carefully to see which Pratyaksha Prabhachandra is referring to, something that Kailas Chandra Shastri in his introduction to the Pramaya Kamala Mahatanda does not seem to have done. In any case, Dikshit's statement that the error pointed out by Kailas Chandra Shastri has to be reassessed in the light of Akalanka's own words and Prabhachandra's use of them. So the basic question now is, do both Dikshit and Kailash Chandra Shastri do Prabhachandra an injustice? Is it possible that Prabhachandra was a bit lackadaisical at the place concerned because he should have hinted at Akalanka's complicated system, especially in his Pramana Pravesha? And this is the question that I would like to seek a complete answer to. Thank you very much.